My first myth today came via email, and it poses the question of whether or not the Genesis song, Me and Sarah Jane, was actually written as a tribute to the iconic Doctor Who companion. You want to know a surefire way to piss off Tony Banks from Genesis? Ask him this question. There are so many interviews you can watch where he is clearly at his wit's end because he's tired of answering this one. He's tired of dispelling this rumor because it's nothing more than a happy coincidence. Yes, Sarah Jane Smith remains one of the most beloved characters from the Longtime series, but the song was actually written about a man slowly descending into insanity. Sanity, or maybe just someone who is so lonely that they've created an entire imaginary relationship. To me, this remains one of the most tragically beautiful lyrics ever written, as he becomes so infatuated with this imaginary woman that it drives him to insanity. And in the end, the song seems to imply that he kills himself, or they both do. Take that however you want. It's completely understandable why people continue to link this song to the character from Doctor Who, but ask the author himself, and he says there's no link. My second myth actually got emailed to me a number of times over the past few weeks, and it raises the question of whether or not there are still four unreleased tracks from the Beatles. This story usually talks about four very specific titles, with two of them being Deck Chair and Colliding Circles. And this myth has seen a resurgence in popularity since the release of the new Beatles record. Sadly, this one is completely false, as EMI Records has an extensive log of every single session the band ever did. And every bit of it has been released over the years in one way or another. Yet the two song titles I've mentioned, and the two that they're often connected with, do come up from time to time, and they have a very specific lineage. When making a list of bootleg Beatles recordings many, many years ago, Beatles fan and sometimes humorist Martin Lewis actually made them up. He was trying to create some new excitement and it turned into a very long running myth. So no, there is not some holy grail of unreleased Beatles studio material. Sorry. My last myth today is a pretty popular one and it questions whether or not Charlie Watts of the Rolling Stones was actually supposed to be the drummer for Cream. At its core, lots of people go to an interview with Jack Bruce as their sighting of this, but unfortunately it's false. But there is a reason why people tend to claim this one is true. Before joining the Rolling Stones, Charlie Watts actually drummed in a band called Blues Incorporated, and the basis for that band was Jack Bruce. And when Watts left the band, he was replaced by, that's right, Ginger Baker. The second piece that leads to this misconception is that Jack Bruce says a lot of the time that when they were considering putting Cream together, Charlie Watts' name came up all the time as the possible drummer. However, he was never asked, Ginger Baker was the only pick. This trio was set from the start, and while there's no slam on Charlie Watts, I think we can agree that they made the right choice. So those are my myths for this week. Be sure to check back here every Friday as I delve into some of the coolest stories in music history. If you've got a myth you want me to check out, email me at thedailyguru at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook right here, and I'll see you guys again next time. Hey!